we have to break it up into functions of x. So this has to be written in terms of x in order for you to integrate it with respect to x. So you can't have y's in there if you're integrating with respect to x. You get me now? Can you hear me now? Good. So I'm breaking that and saying, hey, x equals y squared. No, 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 take a square root. Involve the plus and minus, and you get plus or minus the square root of x. Plus the square root of x, minus the square root of x. So those are two separate functions? Yes, very good. Square root of x and negative square root of x. Those are two functions in terms of x. And then a third one, y equals x minus 2. That's another function of x. So how many of you all together? Mm -hmm. Three. One. Two, three. Three functions in terms of x. The problem is we are in terms of x. What variable do you solve for? Y. Can you go and change these into x's using what you know though? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So for y equals 2, x equals what? For y equals negative 1, x equals what? How'd you get 4 and 1? Um, I, x equals y squared, I'm just looking at yeah. plugging in 2 and that equals 4. Then the same thing with negative 1, that equals 1. Perfect. Exactly right. You can do it with the other problem and you could do the exact same thing. You could. You could do it from right here as well, correct? So either one of these things, if I plug in y equals 2, hey, x is 4. Plug in y equals negative 1, hey, x is 1. You get me on that? Do it here even, like he said. If I plug in 2, I get 4. If I plug in negative 1, I get 1. It has to work, because you said they're equal. But that has to be the case. How many will feel okay I get an x, x bounds? Now, what I'm going to do is change my graph just a little bit. I'm going to erase the parts that I don't need, because it looks a little confusing to me right now. This part is not binding any area, if you want to say it that way. Neither is this part. Neither is this one. Neither is that one. If you don't mind, I'm going to redraw this picture a little bit bigger so you can see it. Would you be okay with that? Okay, it's clearly not the scale, but it's the same idea. You see the, the curve I'm trying to draw here. Let's think about what we actually have going on. Remember, we are talking in terms of x, in terms of x. What's this top function from 0 to whatever this point is? What's this piece right here? What's this piece right here? Yeah, very good. Now tell me the points. Where does my functions start? At zero. Good, zero. We saw that actually basically from the picture. Or understand that's a parabola that starts uh, y shaped, really going this way, a function of y, but starts at zero. Hey, what's that point? What's this point? We found out they intersect at one and no. Uh, One four. and four. four on the x-axis. That's what these numbers are coming back at. The y's, the y's said they intersect at negative one. Ha, huh, look at that. And two on the y-axis. Yes, that's true. We don't care about y in this context if we're dealing with functions of x. We care about x's. That's why we had to find the x's. Now, you have to be okay with that. The y's would have given us something completely different if we did it this way with y values. What could happen? This goes one. Four. Sure. Now I've kind of given this away by this picture. How many integrals do you need here? Explain to why two. Right. Two. Why two? Zero to one, one to four. 
Zero to one, one to four, but why? Oh, you have two intersection points only. We have two intersection points. You explained that yesterday that however many intersection points you have, you're going to have the interval. Okay, so how many, if you consider this as three functions, how many intersection points do we have? Two. two. Not two. I'm holding it up. Two, three. Yeah. If you consider this as three functions, look, you have two functions, that's one. There's two, there's three. Yeah. You have three functions. Joe, you were going to say something. I, I, I thought maybe you're going to add the areas from the square root of x to x minus two, and then negative square root of x to x minus two. Like that. We're going to deal with this as just two basic basic areas. But I, I want you to see you're, you're kind of missing something. You're kind of missing something. Think about it this way. I'll I'll, lead, I'll try to lead you to the the answer. Uh, the way integrals work for areas is one function is on top the entire time and one function is on the bottom the entire time. We have three functions. We have three functions. So, can one function be on the top the entire time and one function be on the bottom the entire time? That would only be two functions. My question is, do you switch functions somewhere? Yes. Where do you switch functions? So basically, look at it. You have to deal with the top and the bottom, right? You have to have this, the same function for that whole interval. So the same function goes to the entire top. That's great. However, right here, I clearly change functions. That necessitates two different integrals because I don't even have the same function. Do you get that idea? So here's the setup for us. Setup for us goes, and hopefully you can see, I want you to help me here. Integral. Where does the first integral start? Zero. Very good. Where does the first integral end? One. Good, because that's the intersection. That's where I'm trading off my two functions. In fact, if you did it this way, and you did what I told you, and you had 0, 1, and 4, you'd see it. You'd see it. You'd say, oh, look at that. Square root of x is on the top. Negative square root of x is on the bottom. Do you see it? And then you did it here. What's is on the top for this range? Square root of x is on the top. What's on the bottom? Oh, not negative square root of x, but what? Yeah, and that shows it. I, I, I swore. I, I, told, I gave you everything you need to know. I really did. It's right here. You just need to realize what's going on. So 0 to, you know, make a little clearer, negative square root of x. 0 to where? Of what? Square root of x minus, because you know you subtract top one minus bottom. What's the bottom one? Negative square root of x. Don't lose that negative, otherwise your integral goes to zero. We don't want that to happen. Minus that. Dx. For sure, dx. Would you agree that that integral represents this little area right here? Yeah. Big old plus. One, what, what now? One to four. One to four. One to four. Zero to one. One to four, sure. It's all right. What's on the top now? Zero. The table does it if you want to do it that way. I love the table. I just made it up. Like this, that's class. Cool one. Square root of x. Minus. Minus what? X minus X minus parentheses. Oh, parentheses are pretty important here. The X. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Can you do those two integrals? Before you do them, be smart about it. Simplify what you can. Okay, don't start just taking random integrals before you start simplifying and putting things together. That would be a silly way to go. You definitely don't want to start dealing with this with all the parentheses. You don't want to start dealing with that until you combine like terms, which you do actually have here. So let's go ahead, kind of nice and slowly, and think about what, we, what we're doing. We've got an integral from 0 to 1. We've got a square root of x minus a negative square root of x. How much is that? 2 root Hey, that makes things easier already. 2 root x plus another integral from 1 to 4. 
square root of x minus x plus 2. You see where the plus 2 is coming from? That's a big deal. dx. Let's keep it going. You're on a roll. 0 to 1. How are you going to write that integral? 2 root x to the 1 half. x to the 1 half. Very good. Because then you can use our integration table and, and do that. Probably also you might want to be pulling that 2 out just for fun. You don't have to. You can. You can surely leave it inside of there. That's really a, a, just a pre personal preference. The next one I'll have from 1 to 4, but I'll have x to the 1 half minus x plus 2 dx. Oh, x to the 1 half. Don't forget we're adding and dividing. 3 halves over 3 halves. So when we're sending, uh, I've, I've not put my integration or my evaluation symbols up there yet. I want to simplify it first. But remember that this is from 0 to 1. And this is from 1 to 4. So before I plug anything in, I'll put, move the 2 up to the numerator. That's going to be 4 x to the 3 halves over 3. we're going from 0 to 1. Plus, this is going to be 2 x to the 3 halves over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 2x from 1 to 4. By show of hands, how many have made it down that far? Hey, the rest of it's just evaluation. Plug some numbers in. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, I'd like for you to hopefully do it on your own. Stop me if I make mistakes, by the way. <laughs> 